The following program was produced by Community Producer. The content, views, and opinions expressed are the sole responsibility of the Community Producer and do not reflect Malden Access Television, the City of Malden, or your cable provider. MATV welcomes your comments. Call us at 781-321-6400 or email us at access at matv.org. Hello, thanks for tuning in, and thank you to the City of Malden for making this presentation possible. My name is Tom Layton. I'm a practicing planner from Minneapolis and currently at the Harvard Graduate School of Design for some further studies. Hello, my name's Anne Forsyth, and I'm a professor of urban planning at Harvard. We're here today to talk about Malden Center. There's been a lot of new development in Malden Center, it has a wonderful Main Street, Pleasant Street, that's been somewhat cut off over time from surrounding areas. But there's plans to open up access to Pleasant Street again, and there have been a lot of efforts in recent years to involve the community in developing a vision for what Malden Center could and should be. And at this point in time, there seems to be a lot of agreement on that vision from the mayor's office to most people who live in Malden. Our job today is to talk about what comes next. And some of that relates to a partnership between Harvard University, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, and the City of Malden to create a more detailed plan for Malden Center. Anne Forseth is the lead from the Harvard University side of that collaborative. And I'm going to ask her to talk about all of this shortly. But first we're going to ask the mayor for his perspective on what he hopes will come out of this planning process. Mayor Christensen. Hello. And thank you to Professor Ann Forsyth of the Harvard Graduate School of Design. One of my goals as mayor is to accomplish what I have heard the residents of Malden ask their mayor to do for years and years now, take down City Hall and reconnect Pleasant Street. I believe that this goal should be a priority of this city because it will serve as the catalyst for significant follow-up investment in our city center. Not only will it give us the chance to create something magnificent on this 2.7 acre site, but it will allow downtown access to the 12 to 15,000 people that use our Malden Center T-Stop daily, yet bypass the square because of this building. This transformative redevelopment will be the cause of the economic resurgence because reconnecting the roads brings needed traffic flow, both pedestrian and vehicular, that are the lifeblood of successful businesses. So thank you again to Professor Ann Forsyth. I look forward to hearing what the Harvard School of Design will propose for our downtown. And more importantly, I look forward to hearing from you, the residents, about what can be done with this site. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Christensen. And you've been doing this work for a long time now, and you've worked in a lot of different communities. So what do you think of Malden Center? Well, I've really uh, enjoyed coming to know Malden Center. It's a really interesting place with a lot of positive features. First of all, it has a great mix of activities. So you can work, uh, live, and shop all in one area. It's very walkable. It's also really well linked to the surrounding uh, region. It has a very uh, good train station and train service, and it has uh, good roadways like Route 60. Pleasant Street is also an interesting and really vital uh, main street, as is Main Street. And the city's been upgrading the area with things like uh, new sidewalks. And there are a lot of very good public buildings and institutions in the sort of area around the downtown, including the high school and the really fabulous senior center. And from the perspective of planning, what is really terrific is that Malden has done quite a lot of previous planning, including the 2007 visioning process that led to the 2010 citywide master plan. And so from the perspective of our work this semester in studio, we have a lot of work to build on and we're not going to have to reinvent the wheel. However, like many older suburbs, Malden does face some challenges. 
while it has really terrific transportation access, it's not always obvious how to get from those transportation routes like the train station and Route 60 to the core of the downtown shopping area. Government Centre makes it difficult to see the downtown um, area from the train station and Route 60 is very busy which is great in that it can connect to the surrounding region but it makes it hard for pedestrians to go from the area say around stop and shop back into the main part of the business district. It would be really great if pedestrians could move around the area more easily. And in addition, while there's lots of parking in the area, it's not always obvious how to get to it. So that's another issue to do with connectivity that could improve. In terms of businesses, there are some terrific uh, smaller and larger businesses in Malden Centre. Uh, but many of the smaller ones are sort of just growing. And so part of what we'll look at in studio is how to support their growth. And finally, while there are some great uh, parks and plazas in that sort of area around the Malden Centre train station. Some of them need help to really fulfil their mission in either being great people places or being places where the folks in Malden can connect better to nature. So while there are some strengths, there are some challenges and things that we can work on over the next few months. That's a nice overview, Anne. Thank you for that. <clears throat> and just for orientation and because city planners just love maps in general, we're, we've got a map on your screen now uh, to give us an opportunity to just talk about and talk you through what we mean when we're talking about Malden Center. So if you, if you look at the map, the most compact definition of Malden Center is the area that stretches roughly from the train station on the one side over to Main Street on the other side, and then Florence Street on the north, down to Center Street or Route 60 on the south. So that's a very compact area of five or six blocks, um, and it's got the retail spines at Pleasant and at Main Street. But it really is closely associated with some areas outside of there. So Malden Center can encompass as well some areas to the east where there are additional businesses and the Malden High School, and it also, um, as Ann was referencing, some of the uh, destination commercial areas on the other side of Route 60, such as Stop and Shop and Walgreens and Best Buy, those kind of areas. So that's what we're talking about as we think about bringing in additional attention and resources to Malden Center is, is that general area. But I want to back up now <clears throat> And I'm wondering, Anne, if you'd be able to tell us more now about this whole planning process. Who's going to be doing what? And what exactly is going to be taking place over the next few months? Well, over the next few months, you'll see a lot of activity in and around Malden Center. But this is really the second part of a three-part process. Um, during the fall, I worked with Tom and some other students to prepare a background report that compiled information about uh, the previous planning and about the issues and challenges in Malden Center. This 150 page report will be made available later in the year. And in this semester we're doing what's called phase two of the project. We're working with the city and the Metropolitan Area Planning Council uh, to, to do uh, some public participation to connect with people in the downtown area and also develop some planning principles and approaches, some implementation ideas for things to do to either enhance what's good about Malden Centre or to uh, solve some problems. But that's not the final planning process. Over the summer, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council will be building on the work that we've done and also the work that it had previously done creating the 2010 master plan to create the actual uh, downtown plan. So while there'll be a lot of activity happening um, over the spring with Harvard students, we're only part of a larger process that's really a partnership between ourselves, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, and the City of Malden. Thanks, Anne. Now I'm thinking about the continuity between the planning that's happening now with the three phases that you described and some of the important work that had taken place in the past. And I'm looking at the goals for Malden Center that came out of the 2007 Malden Visioning process. The Malden Vision says, and this is a quote, 
the heart of our community, downtown or Malden Square, will be a revitalized, vibrant, and livable place that encourages a mix of uses, uh, provides daytime, evening, and weekend attractions, offers a variety of restaurants, coffee shops, cultural venues, and activities, and encourages a viable retail district. Methods to promote, attract, and sustain this viability will be employed. So that's a very nice statement. I'm hearing connectivity, I'm hearing street life, attracting new development of various kinds. Are these goals going to change as we do more planning for Malden Center? No, they're great goals and they're ones that we'll embrace as we go forward with uh, planning for Malden Center. There's a couple of ways in, uh, in which what we're doing adds to that vision from 2007 that was embodied in the, in the Malden Master Plan. First of all, we're actually just looking in more detail at Malden Center we can uh, just focus in on the particular issues in the sort of downtown retail residential area and come up with more detailed policy plans and programs to help um, enhance that area. And in addition, there's been a, something of a change since that period as well. Although people have been talking about demolishing Government Center for a long time, Mayor Christensen has made it a, a key proposal and has really put some weight behind that. So the project is just assuming that Government Center will be demolished and we're working from that as a base. That provides a number of opportunities for redevelopment that may not have been uh, so clearly visible in the previous planning. Great. All right, now you and I and some other students work together, as you mentioned, over the fall to pull together a lot of background information about the area. <clears throat> we looked at previous plans, the economy, demographics, uh, recent developments. So I want to shift the conversation now to talk a little bit about what we learned and what that means for um, Malden moving forward. Uh, I think that people might be interested in some facts and perspectives about their hometown. So are you ready? Yep. All right. Well, we have to start with the Government Center building. There's so much agreement today that it choked off downtown and resulted in killing a lot of the retail businesses that were on the street. <clears throat> so how did that happen and what's being done about that? Well, in the 1960s, many places, and, and not just uh, Malden, were worried about aging infrastructure and the way that uh, businesses and shops were perhaps moving either further out um, in the metropolis. And so many places thought that uh, by demolishing older buildings and building new uh, buildings like Government Center in that period that they could revitalize their downtown. Um, but after 40 years uh, government center is itself suffering from, uh, it, from aging. And so the cities had to make a decision about whether it should invest in uh, extensive repairs and rehabilitation of that building or if it should just demolish it and open up development opportunities. It does provide opportunities to both increase uh, park and public open spaces, but also to increase uh, development in the area of various sorts. And I know one of the things that the students will be looking at this semester is various options for that redevelopment, ways that the city can recoup some of the costs of the demolition through uh, providing opportunities to have new activities, uh, housing, offices, commercial activities in that area. It's a fairly big site and a big opportunity in Malden um, now that so much development has happened and there are fewer sites available for new, for new growth. So it's a great development site that, and it'll be a really interesting um, opportunity for us to, to look at options this semester. Well, I, I know one of the things that I um, am really impressed by is the level of public support that there seems to be for this. I was looking at the Malden Patch um, and they ran an article back in February of last year on this and they offered a, a poll to the um, to people in the after the article and a hundred people responded to that poll and they phrased it fairly. They said a significant amount of public investment would go to make this change which would open up the street and, and provide access to Pleasant Street. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, of the 100 people that answered that, 75% felt that it was a worthy public investment to take on that ambitious project. 
So it speaks to the level of support that that project has. All right, well, let's talk about people for a second. We spent some time digging into census information, and Malden looks really diverse, of course, as will come to no surprise to some of the viewers. Um, but here's the number that jumped out at me. 65% of people who live in downtown Malden um, are foreign born. That's a huge number. What can you say about about this, Anne? Well, Malden is very diverse. And the number that really stood out to me is that, um, what is it, 71% of residents speak a language other than English at home, compared to 28% in the metropolitan area. That's, um, what is it, 71% uh, to 28%. That's a huge difference. And what it means is that Malden has a lot of assets and capacity in foreign languages that could be a, a real asset to them in um, economic development and uh, future growth. So that's pretty interesting. It's also a highly educated population in the downtown. 45% have a bachelor's degree or higher. Uh, compared with only 30% in Malden as a whole. And that 45% is bigger even than the Boston region. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty interesting that it's a foreign-born educated population. Mm -hmm. But even with that high education, the per capita income is about the same as Malden. So it's sort mm -hmm. of pretty similar in some ways as well. Mm -hmm. I think it also says that as we plan for the future of Malden Center, uh, we need to build the area as an area that's inviting to everybody, people of all kinds and backgrounds. That's true, and it's particularly the case in Malden that there are a lot of different ethnic groups, so there's no sort of dominant language apart from English, um, and so that diversity comes out in lots of different ways. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, something else that jumped out at me in our background research is the many different things that are going on in Malden Center. The maps that are playing now on your screens show where um, apartments and condominiums have been built in the last few years. They show where office workers are working, and they show retail businesses and restaurants. So there's quite a mix of everything going on in downtown Malden. <clears throat> the, the policy question that I want to check in with you on, Anne, is whether that's good for an area, or should there be more of a focus? Oh, no. It's actually really good for an area to have a mix like that. It, re it helps businesses because they can sell to office workers in the day and to residents in the evening. It helps residents because they're more likely to be able to shop and work near home. It can make a really lively downtown because all those people are walking to and from various destinations that are close together. And so, um, and when we think about the places in Massachusetts that we really love, they're often the historic uh, downtowns where there are a lot of different activities happening. So it's really part of Massachusetts life to have these areas where there's a lot of diverse things happening. People can hang out, walk around. So I actually think mm. it's just very beneficial for Malden to have that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think the city will be able to maintain that mix in the future? Well, people are drawn to places with uh, many amenities, with a sort of a mix of activities and amenities like parks and, uh, and shops and so on. However, uh, it will take some work to keep that mix. For instance, it could be possible in the future for Malden to lose a major employer. And so it's really important that the city is prepared to attract others and that there's support for sort of small local businesses to grow as well. So there can be a sort of a role from the city and other places to nurture uh, small local businesses. Housing development has also added a lot of local residents and will continue to do so for a while. And the government centre site could be an important part of that mix. But it's really important to get the balance of housing right. And a key question I want to ask is, does the mix of housing in downtown Malden match the, residential, the profile of the residents in Malden and Malden Centre? And is there housing in Malden Centre for all the various kinds of people who work there? 
And that comes into play in terms of how affordable the housing is and also the size of the units. Can families and singles and other people uh, live um, in downtown Malden. So getting the balance of housing rights so it reflects the larger face of Malden is also very important. And finally, the issue of amenities is, is a key one. Certainly, Malden has a lot of amenities in terms of shops and public spaces and so on. But some of them could do with a little um, attention to make sure that they are all they can be, that they are really great uh, people places or nature places. All right. Well, in terms of recent development, this chart now shows that Malden and its neighbors are all growing and that Malden is growing with a good mix of both commercial and residential development. Is that how you'd read it, Anne? Well, I think Malden has had a good mix of development. But if you look at the chart, you'll see that it's a chart that shows units per 10,000 people. So although Malden's had a lot of development, it actually lags behind its sort of neighbors in terms of units per capita. So relative to other places, there's less housing being developed. So that is certainly an area where Malden could grow a little more. Yeah, although I think we have to keep in mind that there were I think, I believe, three new housing developments that were all approved within the last couple of months by the city of Malden. So those could be coming online soon. And they may not be have been represented in those figures. Yeah, certainly <coughs> they're not in those figures and they can alter that mix. Yeah. There has been a lot of growth and it's uh, coming to grips with the recent sort of developments will be an important part of what we do uh, this semester. Mm -hmm. And before we leave the idea of developments entirely, have to, uh, call out the fact that there's a minor league ballpark in the development stages just outside of, uh, of uh, just south of um, Route 60. So that's going to be quite an amazing new amenity for the community. All right, well, um, let's talk about additional impressions of Malden Center. Sometimes it's helpful to think in terms of strengths and weaknesses of an area or strengths and challenges. And um, from previous reports and, and uh, public input and from some of the research we've done, we've started to outline a list of what we think are important strengths and, uh, and important challenges that need to be addressed for Malden Center. And the purpose of this is not to ha um, have a definitive list at this stage, but it's to have materials to bring out to residents and to business owners and say, you know, what do you think of these? What um, strengths do you appreciate that might not be on this list or challenges you fa think the downtown faces that we should be aware of. <clears throat> so it's a conversation starter. But Anne, I'd love it if you could highlight what a few of these things are from your perspective. Well, actually, I think Malden has great bones. It has really terrific access by both road and rail. It has uh, some lively businesses of various sizes in that uh, downtown Malden Center area. There are a lot of new projects going ahead from housing to um, upgrading the streets. And it has a diverse and interesting population. But there are some areas where it would be possible to um, improve on these assets. For instance, Sometimes it's hard to get around the downtown or it's not clear where some of the businesses or other amenities are. And so just having better pedestrian access around the downtown uh, would be really helpful. Getting the housing balance right so that there are housing opportunities for the variety of people who work in Malden would also be an important aspect for us to look at. And uh, finally, uh, making open spaces really usable is, is another mm -hmm. thing that mm -hmm. we'll be um, examining this uh, semester. Right. Great. All right, Anne. Well, we're going to have to close out here. But before we go, could you tell folks how and when they're going to get a chance to provide input on what they think should be happening in downtown Malden? Well, there are two main uh, opportunities to get involved. During late February and March, the Harvard students will be out and about gathering opinions. They may go to a meeting of a group that you're involved with, and they'll certainly be in uh, the Main Street and Pleasant Street areas uh, talking to people on the street, and there'll be a survey online that'll be linked to the city website. So there'll be a number of ways 
in February and early March that you can get involved and students will be out uh, wanting to talk with folks. And then later in the spring, in late April and early May, we'll have an exhibition and a sort of open house showing the materials that we've created and getting feedback. The, it'll likely be on cable television and also on the city's website. And this will be a time when you can really give us input about our ideas. Because remember, that isn't the last stage. The Metropolitan Area Planning Council will take our ideas and your feedback on those ideas and write the actual plan over the summer. So there are two really good opportunities for getting involved with this planning process. Great. <clears throat> Um, and we'll be, as you said, getting the word out through various channels on these. But I think we could also invite people to get in touch with us and give us their contact information. And we can start uh, a distribution list uh, f for communications about these things. So I want to invite people, and we're putting, um, should be putting on your screen now, where you can send your contact information if you'd like to have a direct uh, email or phone call about an event coming up related to this project. And we'll share this distribution list with the city, of course, as well. So um, send that request and how you want to be contacted to planformaldencenter at gmail.com. So planformaldencenter, all one word, at gmail.com. And, and again, I think the, um, that name will be floating on your screen so you could write it down. Well, thank you, Anne, and thank you all for allowing us to bring you some information about Malden Center. We and the mayor and his staff hope to see you and hear from you in the coming months about how to make Malden Center as attractive and inviting as it can possibly be. Thank you. <laughs>